Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. Uh, so I received a word from the Holy Spirit this past weekend, and I want to share it with you, and it's a really simple word. Uh, and, and the word that I felt like he gave me was a word uh, relating to rest. Um, so during this, uh, this season, especially during this uh, pandemic season, um, I feel like I've been going nonstop at times, and I know a lot of uh, pastors and ministers feel that way. Um, you know, trying to learn how to put their services online and, and among other things, and now trying to get churches started back up and everything like that. Um, but, but I have been trying to put out uh, all the content that I can that I feel like the Lord has given me during this time um, to try to be an encouragement to, to, to those who need encouragement, who need hope, who need, need truth during this time. And so I've been, uh, you know, I've been really busy. And this past weekend, I, I started praying, and I'm, I'm praying about, Lord, uh, what do you want me to share this week uh, if you want me to share something? Um, and for a while, I wasn't getting anything from the Lord. And then um, I actually, I actually uh, took some time off, started to do some normal things. Like I went outside, and I started to play basketball, you know, just with myself. And I, I feel like the Holy Spirit uh, this weekend gave me this very specific word relating to rest, and it was this. The, the greater test of faith is not whether you can keep going through the storm, but whether you can rest during the storm. And I feel like what he was saying to me was, if, if you can learn to trust me, if you can learn to put your hope and your, and your faith and your trust in me and not in you getting everything done or you, do, you figuring out you know, how everything's gonna work out, then what, what's gonna happen is you can rest. Even, uh, even when you're busy, you can find rest in me. Even uh, you know when when you don't know how things are going to work out, you can rest. And, and, I, and I actually uh, I read this really cool passage uh, this weekend as well um, in Acts chapter 27, and it's this passage where the Apostle Paul is a prisoner. Uh, he's he's on a ship. Um, he's being taken to Rome, and uh, they're they're back. They're actually about to set sail again. And I want to pick it up in verse 10 and show you what Paul says. Right at the end of verse 9, Paul began to admonish them and said to them, Men, I perceive that the voyage will certainly be with damage and great loss, not only to the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. But the centurion was more persuaded by the pilot and the captain of the ship than by what was being said of Paul. Uh, so what ends up happening in this situation is because they don't listen to Paul, um, who was being guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, they set sail and they actually they run into this storm. So verse 14 says, But before very long, there rushed down from the land a violent wind called, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce this, but Iroquilo. <laughs> and when the ship was caught in it and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and let ourselves be driven along. Um, so this giant storm, was actually it's actually a, a hurricane in this case, begins to, to show up and, and they run right into the middle of it. And, and here, here's the, uh, the point I want to pull out of this is, is some of us, um, we have run into a storm because uh, we have chosen not to listen to the voice of the Lord. We've chosen not to obey something. We've, we've gone our own way, kind of like this guy is not listening to um, this, this apostle, this prophet of God, and he chooses to go his own way and, and damage occurs, like they run right into the middle of the storm. Some of us are in that camp over here, but some of us today, honestly, we're in a different camp. We have been just moving along, trying to do what God is asking us to do, and the storm has just come upon us, you know, and, and I mean, for example, the whole, the pandemic, the economic crisis, all of these things, a lot of us, these aren't things that, that our own decisions, you know, led us into. This is something that just happened. Uh, but what's amazing is uh, in this story, there's, there's some really cool truths we can pull out um, that I believe are going to be an encouragement to you and actually are going to help you to be able to rest even now, um, even when uh, you know a lot of people out there are confused, they don't know what the future is going to look like, but God is saying you can rest in the middle of the storm. So I want to give you two truths that I believe God is teaching us during the storm. And the first one is that faith brings rest. Faith brings rest. Uh, and I want to show you in this story here, uh, starting in verse 21. It says, When they had gone a long time without food, then Paul stood up in their midst and said, Men, you ought to have followed my advice and not to have set sail from Crete and incurred this damage and loss. Yet now I urge you to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night an angel of God, to whom I belong and whom I serve, stood before me, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar, and behold, God has granted you all those who are sailing 
with you. Therefore, keep up your courage, men, for I believe God that it will turn out exactly as I have been told. Um, so this is amazing in this moment. All of these guys, you know, they, they are, they're so uh, nervous. They're so scared. They're, they've been working really hard. Uh, it, says, it says when they had gone a long time without food. Like these guys are tired. They're hungry. They're exhausted physically, emotionally, you know, like mentally exhausted. And yet Paul is standing up and he's saying, take courage. He's saying, yeah, yeah, it looks bad. Yeah, things are going, you know, downhill for us. Yeah, we are, we are you know, uh, not sinking technically at the moment, but it looks like we're headed that direction. And he's saying, yet yeah, because of what God said, you can have courage right now. You can rest. You can start resting in your heart. And a, a lot of times, you know, we need things like physical rest. We need uh, mental rest. We need, uh, you know, emotional rest. A lot of times, all of those things start in the heart. It starts with the decision to put our faith in God. To, to have courage based on what God has said and not based on what we can see right now. So the second truth uh, that I believe God is speaking to us during this storm is that rest brings strength. So if we are, if we're not willing uh, to look at the situation uh, with, with trust and with faith, we're not going to find the rest we need. And if we don't find that rest we need, man, we're going to be moving on uh, tired, exhausted. We're not going to have the strength that we need. And God wants us to move forward in strength. And because of that, he wants us to move forward in faith. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump ahead to verse 27 and then 33. It says, But when the 14th night came, as we were being driven about in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight, the sailors began to surmise that they were approaching some land. So the reason I'm reading verse uh, 27 is because it says about the 14th night. These guys are, are beyond their their limit almost like these guys are about to to give up they've been battling this hurricane for 14 days paul at one point said hey like keep up your courage trust in the lord and yet these guys have still not eaten and what that shows is that they 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 they, did, they chose not to trust the lord they chose not to to believe to really believe that word that paul gave them maybe they believed it at first but at this point they it's gone way beyond belief and they're they're doing everything that they can possibly do uh, to, to save themselves, to, to survive. And then skipping to verse 33, until the day was about to dawn, Paul was encouraging them all to take some food saying, today is the 14th day that you have been constantly watching and going without eating, having taken nothing. Therefore, I encourage you to take some food for this is for your preservation for not a hair from the head of any of you will perish. Having said this, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of all and he broke it and began to eat. All of them were encouraged and they themselves also took food. So this is pretty amazing. Um, these guys, they finally listen to what Paul is saying. And, and in fact, he, be, he is the example for them. They see that he is eating, he's refreshed, he's strengthened. And they're like, man, we need some of that. You know, like we, he's right. We need to stop trying to make this work on our own and we need to rest. You know, and maybe some of these guys uh, were believing what he was saying at this point. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they had just gotten to the point of uh, where they were just giving up and they're like, fine, whatever. <laughs> I, you know, we don't know exactly what they were thinking in this story. But what I believe God is saying to us right now is the same thing Paul is saying to these men. He's saying, he's saying, rest, uh, take some, say, take some time for self-preservation. And I'm not saying that in a selfish way. I'm saying that um, uh, from a, a perspective of God created our bodies to only go so far, uh, you know, at a certain time. And then we need rest. We need things like sleep. We need things like proper nutrition. We need things like uh, a, a, a rest for our mind away from whatever the work is that we're doing. You know, and that was part of the reason God implemented the Sabbath in the Old Testament. Um, the Sabbath, first and foremost, was a commandment that was built on a principle of trust. God is saying, do you trust me enough to rest and not to try to figure everything out on your own, not to try to take care of everything on your own? And that's what God is saying right now. He's saying, are you trusting me enough to rest when it's time to rest? And if you do that, he's promising that we will find strength, that we will be refreshed. And I'm actually reminded of the story of Elijah uh, from 1 Kings chapter 19, um, where he's, uh, he's being threatened by Queen Jezebel. He's running for his life. Um, and he has basically given up. Even though he just saw God come through for him in a mighty way, um, he's gotten to the point where he's ready to die. He's asking God to kill him. And, and it says that he leaves his servant and he travels into the wilderness for a day. And he sits down under this tree and he just, he's, he's ready to give up. He's ready to die. And in that moment, uh, God looked at Elijah, he looked at his servant, and he knew 
yeah, he needed some, uh, he needed some um, emotional encouragement. He needed some spiritual encouragement. Uh, you know, he, he needed uh, uh, some refreshment of the mind, but he also needed um, some physical strength uh, replenished. And so Elijah takes a nap and God actually sends an angel to wake him up. And he says, here, eat. And the angel has made food for him. He eats. He takes another nap, <laughs> you know, two naps in a row. Uh, and then the angel wakes him up again and says, eat again. He eats again. And so in that moment, God saw Elijah's need and he provided for it. So, so if you're feeling like, God, I have all these needs. And if I don't do something, they're not going to get met. God is saying he wants to be the one providing for your needs. And he knows when you need rest. He knows when you need refreshing and, and, and encouragement and strength. He knows when you need physical provision. And what was really cool is when, when Elijah... Uh, listened to God and he and he ate and he was refreshed even when he felt uh, like giving up you know even when he probably felt like not doing anything just laying down and dying um, he was strengthened and then he after that he travels 40 days uh, to, to, to Horeb the mountain of God and at this mountain God begins to speak to him through the still small voice of the Holy Spirit and he begins to refresh him spiritually not just physically you know or emotionally and, and this is so amazing because this is what God wants to do for us too. Uh, you know, during this time where, uh, yeah, emotions are high, where, you know, maybe we feel like we're going nonstop. Um, I have I have friends right now uh, who are in the medical field, and man, they've been working like 70 or 80 hour weeks, just because of all the new regulations that have to be put in place and all of these different uh, reasons. You know, um, they've been working like crazy. So so you know, if if I'm saying I'm busy right now, they are far more busy than I have ever been. And, and maybe you're in that position too. You're, you're far more busy than you've ever been. Maybe you're a lot more stressed than you've ever been. But God is saying, even in the middle of that storm, you can rest. And he wants to be the one to provide that rest to you. Whatever it may look like, physical rest, spiritual rest, or emotional rest, or mental rest. But the point I want to make uh, based on the story of Elijah is because he chose to believe God and because he rested, suddenly his ability to hear from God um, heightened. He, he had this better uh, sense of what God was saying and he could hear his voice a whole lot clearer in that moment. And that's where God wants us to be. When we're resting in him, in his presence, when we're coming before him and saying, God, you know, no matter how I feel, I'm going to worship you right now because I know in your presence is fullness of joy and the joy of the Lord is my strength. When, we're, when we are finding joy and strength and rest in him, we're going to hear his voice a whole lot clearer um, than we would if we were just going nonstop and trying to figure things out. Um, and, but, but here's the thing, when we hear his voice, when he says, this is what I want you to do next, or this is how I, I'm going to help you make it through this season, then we have an opportunity to obey, to either listen and obey, you know, uh, or, or to not. The way that the centurion did when, when Paul was telling him, uh, this is not a good idea to go here. You know, the centurion, he could have said, he could have said to Paul, is this you talking or is this God talking? You know, is, and, and Paul would have told him, Paul would have been honest with him. And, and if God is the one who's saying it, if God is the one who's saying um, this is not a good time for this or this is a good time for this, it's it's up to us whether we're, we're trusting him enough, uh, first off, to rest and listen to what he's saying, but also to obey him, you know, once we begin to hear his voice. And, and what's so amazing is um, in the end, when um, in this story with Paul, there's actually this moment where these sailors are going to try to escape from the ship. Um, and Paul tells uh, the, the leader, he tells him like, if these guys get away, they're not going to be saved because God says only the people that stay with the ship are going to be saved. And they actually cut the ropes and they don't let any of the sailors leave, um, on this rowboat. And, and because of that, they all get to, uh, the, the ship is lost and destroyed, but every single person's life is preserved. Every person is, is saved and gets to the island safely. And that was God. And what's so amazing is when we choose uh, obedience, when we choose to hear the voice of God, to, 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 to read the word of God, listen to what he is saying to us, and we choose to obey, even during the storm, even during a hard season, we're gonna, that is going to be a testimony to other people. You know, all of these sailors in the ship with Paul, they got to look back and see what God did. And, and they got to look back and see what Paul said God was doing before he did it. And man, that was a crazy testimony that they got to witness. Probably those guys got saved, you know, probably some of them said, Paul, this, this God that you're serving, I want to know him because man, I've never seen a God that can do what he can do. And people are going to say that same thing during this season when we choose to listen to his voice, when we're resting in his presence, and then we choose to obey, 
We are gonna, we're gonna be shining like a light in a dark time and people are gonna say, I want to know the God that you're serving. So I'm almost done, but I wanna share a really cool story with you first. Um, this is actually, it's an illustration um, from something that happened when I was younger. Uh, when, when I was probably in my early teen years, um, we had a, a lake that was near my parents' house. I had five siblings that I grew up with. Um, and, and this one summer, we had one of our cousins over uh, uh, for a few days, I think maybe it was for a whole week or so. Um, and, and he came over, we had a lot of fun playing outside and going to the lake and doing different things. But, but one time when we were down at the lake, we had this little uh, kayak that didn't, I think it didn't have a rudder on it or something. It was really unstable. Uh, uh, anyways, and so we're taking turns out on the water on this kayak. Uh, and my cousin says he wants to turn. So he gets on this one person kayak. He, he, he goes out onto the water a little ways. And, uh, and he actually ends up falling off. And, and you know, it's, it wasn't that deep where he was, but it was deep enough where he couldn't touch the bottom. Um, and he's, he's in the water and he starts to splash around and struggle and he's like saying things and we can't really hear what he's saying. And you know, he, he is the type of guy that he, he knows how to make people laugh. And so me and my siblings are standing on the shore and we start laughing. We're like, oh, hilarious. He's pretending, you know, like, like he can't swim, right? And so we're laughing and we're like, oh, he's so funny. Uh, one of us responded differently and, and that was actually our dog. Uh, his name was Theoden. Um, he, he was uh, one of the coolest dogs I've ever known. Um, and anyways, and so Theoden's standing on the shore and he sees my cousin out in the water struggling and you know, like uh, coughing up water and trying to, uh, to, to say something. And we're, while we're laughing, he jumps in the water and he starts to swim out there to him. And he makes this little semicircle around him. Um, and as he comes around him, my cousin wraps his arm around our dog. And he, uh, and he actually like holds on, uh, you know, for dear life. And in that moment, I, suddenly I have this realization and I say, guys, stop laughing. <laughs> and I realized he's not kidding around. He doesn't know how to swim. We had no idea that he had no that he did not know how to swim, and and Theoden actually brings him all the way back to shore, and uh, you know it was a really cool moment for me. Uh, you know it was scary in one way because I realized how irresponsible I was being as as the older you know sibling in that moment, but also it was cool because I realized you know even when we didn't realize what was going on, uh, we had you know they 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 say a dog is is a man's best friend right? We we had this 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 dog that suddenly, uh, you know, my respect for him <laughs> grew a lot in that moment because I realized, man, he understood what was going on and he did something about it, you know? He didn't, he, like, we're watching our, our cousin drown, basically, and he, he decided he was gonna do something and he went out there and he saved him. And, and the reason I'm telling this story is because there, there was a point in my life where I felt like my cousin out there in the water drowning. I was, I was flailing my arms, I was doing everything I could, I was trying to reach out to other people, you know, as much as I could, I, I was trying to find a lifeline. And in that moment, uh, what I found was the cross of Jesus Christ. And what's so cool about uh, the cross is when, when Jesus died on the cross, it was as if, you know, in a, a figurative sense, he was jumping in the water after us and he was becoming the lifeline that we needed. And, and, and any of us who have been saved, any of us who, who have a personal relationship with God, at some point in our life, we realize our need for Jesus Christ. And man, we grabbed onto him with everything we had. We said, I, I, nothing else is gonna save me. Only you can save me, Jesus. But here's what I believe happens sometimes when we start going through storms in life. Maybe we've been saved for a little while, you know, and, and, and suddenly we feel like we're drowning in this storm. Maybe it's because of our own decisions or maybe it's something that we've just walked into not, and it's not our fault, but we feel this, this, the waves hitting us. We feel like we're drowning in this moment. And we've actually, we've actually, uh, we're not holding on to Jesus the way we were at first. And because of that, we, we feel like life is getting the best of us. And, and here's what I believe God is saying is reach out for Jesus Christ again, man, hold on to him with everything you have. Look back at the cross every single day that I'm talking about uh, reading, reading the Gospels and remembering what Jesus has done, remembering the price that he was willing to pay for us, remembering the love of God that was demonstrated to us on the cross, remembering the, the Holy Spirit who he sent to us and, and that we get to receive based on what he did for us. 
And, and I'm reminded of Peter, you know, when he's walking on the water, the only reason Peter was able to stay afloat is because he kept his eyes on Jesus Christ. And as soon as he took his eyes off of his Savior, he started to sink. And if you feel like you're sinking today, I'm just encouraging you to set your eyes back on Jesus Christ. Look back to the only one who is the lifeline who can save us, the only one who can actually bring us to shore safely, and that is Jesus Christ. The same way that uh, a dog is man's best friend, you know, and Thaden was this kind of like this savior figure for my cousin that day. Uh, the Bible actually refers, um, it, it says that a, a friend sticks closer than a brother. And I honestly believe that verse is referring to Jesus because later uh, in, the, in, the, in the Bible, Jesus actually says, no, greater love has no one than this, that he lay his life down for his friends. And Jesus laid his life down for not only his friends, but also for his enemies, which is something that, you know, Paul talks about how a, a, a good person might possibly dare to die for, you know, for a friend or for someone they know, someone they love, but who would die for an enemy? And Jesus was willing to die for the sins of the world, for his friends, for his enemies, you know, for those of us who are, are choosing him and for those of us who are rejecting him as well. So if, if you're listening to me today and maybe you know you don't have a real relationship with Jesus Christ, maybe you've never accepted that lifeline, I want to encourage you to go watch another video of mine. It's called God Thinks About You. I um, mean, you should be able to find it on YouTube by searching for that title. Um, but go watch that video because in that video, I talk about what it means um, to start a relationship with God and, and how to actually begin that relationship. But if you're listening to me and you know you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but maybe you're battling the waves right now and, and you feel like you're sinking, my encouragement to you again is to go back to the cross. Uh, start preaching the gospel to your own heart every day. Let the Holy Spirit remind you of how good the gospel is, of what Jesus has done for you. And you're going to find that Jesus is your lifeline just as much now as he was when you first got saved. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was an encouragement to you. Um, if you want to find out more about my ministry, you can go to TroyBlackVideos.com. You can find me on Facebook uh, at Author Troy Black. And one more thing, if, if you want to get a free uh, downloadable copy of my testimony book, it's called My Mess, uh, you can find that on TroyBlackVideos.com as well. I love you all so much, and I'll see you next time.